Audi is one of the most recognizable luxury car brands in the world along with Mercedes-Benz and BMW. Last year, they sold a total of 1.81 million cars around the world, but this is actually 14% down from the previous year. So why are Audi sales down and what does their logo even mean? Make sure to stick around till the end to find out. Welcome to Hari's Hobbies. So it all started when an automobile company named Winkelhofer & Yenick was established in 1896 in Chemnitz, Germany by Winkelhofer & Yenick. They originally started selling motorcycles in 1902, but also added automobiles in 1903. They created the Wanderer brand in 1911 to use with overseas exports. But soon after, this brand name was also adopted for domestic sales as well. By 1926, they were producing 25 vehicles per day and they were doing pretty well, but this would all change with the depression of 1929. They were forced to sell their motorcycle company to French Sec Janacek in 1929. And in 1932, they also had to sell their car division along with their factories to Auto Union. Around this same time in 1916, a Danish engineer named Jorgen Rasmussen founded another automobile company in Zschopau, Saxony producing steam fittings trying to build a steam powered car. This was unsuccessful, but he was able to make a two stroke toy engine. In 1919, he slightly modified the engine and put in a motorcycle which he called Des Knaben Wunsch, which meant boy's wish. Later, he released the Das Decline Wunder, which meant the Little Wonder. And this is how the DKW brand was formed. And by the late 1920s, DKW was the world's largest motorcycle manufacturer. Around the same time, on November 14, 1899, August Horst invented a company named August and C in Ernfeld, Cologne. In 1902, he moved to Reichenbach in Wachtland and founded a joint stock company named August and C Motor Wagon Work AG. But he had trouble with the CFO, and so in 1909, he decided to create another new company. He created August Horst Automobile Work AG, but he had to change the name of the company as Horst was already a registered brand. On the 25th of April 1910, he changed the company's name to Audi Automobile Work AG. Audi was the Latin translation of the German verb Horschen, which meant to listen. In 1932, both the Porsche's brands, Porsche and Audi, merged with DKW and Wanderer to create the Auto Union Group of Saxony. And these four companies represent the four rings on the company's logo, and this is how Audi was born. Before World War II, Auto Union only used a four interlinked logo on their racing cars. At this time, the auto companies used their own logos and brands. They were highly focused on smaller cars due to the economic downturn in the 1930s. By 1938, the DKW brand made up 17.9% of the German car market because they really focused on small cars. Audi on the other hand only accounted for 0.1% of the German car market and the final few Audis were delivered in 1939. And after that, this brand completely disappeared from the new car market for over two decades. During World War II, like most German manufacturers, Auto Union was repurposed for military tool manufacturing. This made them a prime target for Allied bombing and by the end of the war, they were heavily damaged. And then after the war in 1945, the Soviet Union overran their factories and completely dismantled them, and their assets were expropriated or taken away with no compensation. The Auto Union of Chemnitz was completely erased from the commercial registrar. Executives knew that there was no prospect in continuing Auto Union's production in Soviet-controlled East Germany. As a result, they liquidated the rest of their assets and moved to West Germany and Ingolstadt, Bavaria. Here, they started an Auto Union spare parts operation by late 1945. And eventually, this became the location of the new headquarters for the reformed Auto Union in 1949. Meanwhile, the former Audi factory in East Germany restarted production and started assembling pre-war models in 1949 and this is where the infamous Audi Trabant originated from. Eventually the companies would rejoin, but currently they are completely separate. The new West German headquarters for our union was created from loans from the state government of Bavaria and the Marshall Plan aid. They were able to relaunch on September 3rd of 1949 and they resumed production of their DKW front-wheel drive cars. 
but the economic boom of the 1960s did not benefit the two-stroke engines of DKW cars. People no longer had to buy smaller cars, and as a result, people switched over to competitor cars from Volkswagen and Opel. Eventually, years of unprofitability led to a decision to sell Auto Union. And a huge selling point for Auto Union was they just finished building a new large factory capable of producing four-stroke engine cars. Volkswagen, after seeing expansion opportunities with the company, decided to buy 50% of the business in 1964. After this purchase, Volkswagen decided to completely dump the sub-brands of Auto Union as they were associated with two-stroke engines. Instead, they resurrected the name Audi from 25 years ago. They offered the same cars but with new engines starting in September of 1965. For example, they took the DKW F102, fitted it with a 4-stroke engine, named it the F103 and sold it under a brand of Audi. As the economy was booming and people wanted more powerful cars, Volkswagen decided to sell Audi cars with their horsepower rating names. This led to the selling of the Audi 60, 75, 80, and 90 until 1972. When Volkswagen bought Auto Union, they had no intention of actually growing the Audi brand, they simply wanted to expand their production. As a result, they forbade Audi workers from further product development. Despite this, Ludwig Karras continued to work on the Audi 100 in secret and when he showed it to Chief Nordoff, he was very impressed. He was so awestruck that he authorized the production of the Audi 100 which was released in 1968. And this is how the Audi brand was resurrected. In 1969, Audi merged with NSU. In the 1950s, NSU was the world's largest motorcycle manufacturer. And this created the company Audi NSU Auto Union AG. At this point, Audi's image was pretty conservative. So a proposal from a chassis engineer named Jorg Bensinger to create a four-wheel drive car was accepted. This technology was to be used in a performance car which was later named Quattro and released in 1980. It was really successful and its prominent wins really proved the viability of four-wheel drive cars in racing. And this put Audi on the world stage for innovative automobile technology. By 1985, the NSU and Auto Union brands were pretty much effectively dead and as a result, the name was shortened to Audi AG. But by this time, the Audi 80 was starting to develop a grandfather car image. Audi tried to combat this by releasing the Type 89 and new Audi 90, but this along with basic construction issues really slumped Audi sales. As a result, in the early 1990s, Audi decided to change their target demographic to luxury car owners and started to compete with the BMW and Mercedes-Benz. This began with the release of the Audi V8 in 1990. And this is how Audi entered the luxury car market. And since the turn of the century, sales for Audi have strongly grown. Worldwide deliveries to customers increased from 653k in 2000 to over 1 million in 2008. Major markets for Audi are Eastern Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and recently China. And this is because Audi is the car of choice for the Chinese government and officials are given Audi cars and 20% of the sales from China are from the government. In late 2009, Audi had an operating profit of 1.17 billion euros, which makes it the largest contributor to the Volkswagen Group. Meanwhile, Bentley and Seed were suffering considerable losses. In May of 2011, Audi of America had record sales, mostly due to their new Audi A3 and A7. And in September of 2012, Audi opened the first manufacturing plant in North America in Puebla, Mexico. And this is how Audi became the popular luxury car brand that we know today, but recently they actually haven't been doing so well. Audi's global vehicle sales were actually down 14% at the end of 2018. Over the last couple of years, there were several internal issues and big scandals as well. In May of 2014, Audi dealers in the UK falsely claimed that the Audi A7, A8, and R8 were NCAP safety tested and received 5 out of 5 for safety testing, but this never actually happened. And of course, there was the Volkswagen emissions testing scandal that happened in 2015. Audi has since admitted that at least 2.1 million cars were involved in the scandal. So, what pretty much took place with this was that software was installed on the cars that manipulated the emissions data which fooled regulators. The pollution caused by these cars were actually much higher than the government mandated levels. 
Despite these, sales for Audi actually increased during these years. So what happened so recently? Well, Audi has had a bad reputation for reliability and customer service. Well, at least that's what many online customers say, and this definitely deters new customers from going to Audi. And then, there are Japanese makers like Honda and Toyota who are matching if not beating Audi's low to mid-end quality with cheaper cars. They are able to provide similar levels of luxury and comfort for a significantly cheaper price. And in my opinion, there really hasn't been that much innovation coming from Audi over the last couple of years. Of course, they're self-driving cars, but as for their most popular cars, they're pretty much the same for the last decade. I mean, take a look at the 2010 Audi A4 and the 2019 Audi A4. They're pretty much identical, and this gets even worse when you compare the Audi Q7s. Sure, there's internal advancements and slight body changes, but there hasn't been a huge refreshment like the other competitors. Other competitors have refreshed their cars completely several times during the same time period. And of course, Audi's models are very classic, but that only goes so far. And this lack of innovation, I think, is one of the most important reasons that Audi is losing sales. There is simply no reason to upgrade to a newer Audi, so people might try out a new competitor when they're switching out cars. And clearly, this is taking a toll on their sales. Audi is one of the most classic German car manufacturers and are really known for their innovation and luxury. Recently, however, their cars lack differentiation from cheaper Japanese cars and have somewhat stagnated in terms of luxury and groundbreaking technology and this has led to a worldwide decrease in sales. But regardless, Audi has such an interesting history as the whole brand was completely discontinued and then suddenly brought back 25 years later. And today, Audi has cemented themselves as an iconic brand and often a fan favorite. Hopefully, Audi will continue to innovate and push the boundaries, but only time will tell. But that's all I have for you guys on Audi, make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari, I'll see you guys on the next one.